So as the war progresses here in Israel, the uh, attitude of the international community that wants to shrink Israel, the Israel shrinkers, the ones that want Israel to see, see Israel defeated, that want to see Hamas be victorious, there's really a new global strategy. That strategy is to make sure that there's a humanitarian crisis, that Israel hits humanitarian workers, to flood Gaza with these humanitarian workers so that you can't, you can't operate at all, you can't fight. And that is one of the keys to the kind of latest efforts against Israel. They want to stop the war. The very same countries <clears throat> who just a few months ago were saying, we're with you, Israel, and we're lighting up the Eiffel Tower with blue and white, are now saying, Israel, you got to stop. There's a humanitarian crisis, and we want to make sure that there is a humanitarian crisis so that we could stop you, so that we could make sure that Hamas declares victory. Uh, that's the key right now. And one of the players, of course, uh, is Jordan, the country of Jordan. And you're going to hear now from Queen Rania. How exactly is she a queen? Well, first thing, when you, when you speak to Jordanians, and I do, you ask them, what do you really think about your monarchy there, your so-called monarchy? Well, they say, well, they're corrupt. These people are totally corrupt. We live in a poor country, in a destitute country, but the king and queen live off the fat of the land. And uh, they enjoy the fruits of our labor, uh, and they live in these big palaces. Moreover, the king is a Hashemite, which basically means he's like a Bedouin from Saudi Arabia, and he has nothing to do with this area. But the reason he rules it is because the British, in their colonialist uh, gasps, created uh, this fake kingdom of Jordan. Why did they do that? Because they wanted to do a favor for their Hashemite uh, clients. And they didn't want the Hashemites to get into the war, into a war in Syria. And basically, they're like, no, 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 we're going to give you this area. We're going to cut it away from what we promised to the Jews, that we recognize Jewish land, and we'll cut it away and we'll create it into this Transjordan, which later was called Jordan, the kingdom of Jordan. But the king is a totally fake colonialist construct. Moreover, Queen Rania is uh, a self-identified Palestinian but not from Palestine, so-called. She's actually from Kuwait. Her parents emigrated. As you can see, Palestinians don't have to live in Palestine, i.e. Arabs of the land of Israel don't have to live in the land of Israel. They could actually be living somewhere else, as we saw also in the video that I did about, uh, about, uh, about Palestine Way in Patterson, New Jersey. So her parents, long time ago, left to Kuwait. She was born in Kuwait, so she's really a Kuwaiti but identifies as a Palestinian. But why is she the queen of Jordan? Because Jordan is actually a Palestinian state. Ta-da! 80% of Jordanians are actually self-identified Palestinians, not Bedouins like the king. Uh, and so they live as a majority, but as a minority status. And, and basically, uh, they're, they're subjugated by this uh, king and queen. Uh, but they see themselves as, as Palestinian, which is interesting because maybe another way to think about this is that Jordan could be a Palestine for Palestinians, i.e. Arabs living in this region could have a state which was once a Jewish state, a part of the Jewish land. They could have a two-state solution and make their life in Jordan or even stay in Israel as residents of Israel, but get Jordanian citizenship, thereby being in the real having citizenship in Palestine, but staying in Israel if, they're, of course, they're peace-loving, non-jihadist, pro-Israel Arabs. But in simple terms, Jordan is a Palestine, right? So, uh, but Queen Rania, Queen Rania, she is very munificent and magnificent, and she wants to make sure that no more Palestinians come to Jordan. She doesn't want her kingdom to be overrun. What will happen to all those privileges? So she is now making sure that there are human shields in Gaza. She wants to make sure that nobody leaves Gaza. She's going to airdrop all kinds of stuff to them over there. Her husband is a pilot, or her father-in-law was certainly a pilot. In any case, so these guys, they want to make sure that they're, A, perceived that as good, and that Israel's perceived as, as a, a humanitarian crisis maker, uh, you know, a starver of children. That's perfect. And she's going to call for ceasefire now, which means Hamas wins. Ceasefire equals Hamas wins. Uh, so Queen Rania, uh, here she is with uh, the, uh, the, the great Israel enemy, Christiana Manpour. Let's see what she says. And that is implementing an immediate and sustained ceasefire, opening all access. We want an, uh, an immediate and sustained ceasefire, i.e. we want Hamas 
to declare victory on Israel. Because all Hamas has to do to declare victory is survive. That's all they have to do. If they could just survive in those tunnels, boom, they have declared victory if they can make it past this war. And she wants, what else does she want? She wants a, a ceasefire. She wants humanitarian corridors. She wants the corridors open, except for one. The Egyptian corridor, right? Nobody wants the Egyptian corridor open because Arabs might actually leave Gaza to find safety, shelter, or, or, or resettlement, uh, and even in different countries, but at least through the corridor of Egypt. So nobody wants that. That would make too much sense. It would be it, nobody wants Israel to win by having Arabs leave Gaza, destroy Hamas, and then allow Arabs that are pro-Israel, non-jihadist uh, uh, peace lovers. Uh, to re-enter or find a different life or for the enemies of Israel or, or those even who just want a different life, find a life somewhere else in Egypt and Arab countries or around the world. They don't want that. They want to make sure that they're stuck there in Gaza as uh, human shields. All right. So that's what she wants. She wants a ceasefire now, i.e. Hamas victory and human shields to remain there. ...into Gaza, particularly land routes, uh, streamlining the inspection process and making sure that there is safe access within Gaza so that the aid can be distributed. Every moment counts. Children are starving as we speak. So every moment and every meal counts. Uh, and so I think now we're past the stage. Every meal counts. I, I wonder how many people in your corrupt, corrupt monarchy uh, like how you guys uh, uh, eat fat while your people starve over there, uh, or at least live in, 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 in squalor and poverty. But OK, you know, she's got she's got the look. And she's got the stuff behind her. She's going to be sending that stuff. She's going to be flying it over to Gaza over there. She's not going to help them uh, uh, escape. She's not going to uh, welcome them with open arms. She's not going to welcome one refugee. No, she won't. But she will make Israel look bad. And sometimes I wonder, I wonder about Israel. Israel, like, why do you help Jordan survive? Why do you prop these guys up? Who does that? Why does that even make sense? You know that Jordan wouldn't survive a day without Israeli defense contractors making sure the jihad doesn't take over. And it wouldn't survive a day without the water that we provide from them from the Jordan River, which amounts to millions of, 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 of water cube, cubes, or water cubes, whatever it's called, water tonnage, water amounts uh, every single year. Israel basically irrigates Jordan. It basically irrigates Jordan. So, like, why do we do this? Why do we allow this, this person to besmirch us, to hate on us, this fake queen? That, 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 you know, now she's talking about morality. She won't let one refugee in. Age ...of trying to talk Israel into doing these things. We need to actually start using measures and political leverage to get them to do those things. Can I of course, the jihad, by the way, just parenthetically, the jihad would love nothing more than to overturn these guys as well. That's the funny irony of it all. The jihad actually would love to destroy the Hashemite kingdom as well. But it doesn't matter because, because when it comes to Israel hate, people love to get together. And so Queen Rania... Uh, is, I'm sorry to say, a fake queen. And Jordan is a fake kingdom. Uh, and uh, it could even be, if we if we so uh, uh, dare to imagine, uh, a Palestinian state where we could have a two-state solution. A Jordan, where Arabs are living there. Um, of course, they too would have to be a non-jihadist because we're, or else we're going to have to make war on them because we make war on jihad. Israel cannot have jihad on its borders any longer. October 7th has taught us that. And so it's time for zero jihad in Gaza, zero jihad in southern Lebanon, zero jihad in Jordan. Uh, but can we see through some of these lies that Queen, Queen, quote unquote, Queen Rania is telling us out there with Christiana Manpour? All right, folks, God bless you. Uh, stay tuned. Stay subscribed. Stay part of it. Write me an email, Yishai, YishaiFleischer.com. Subscribe to Yishai Fleischer TV. Lots more good stuff is on the way. God bless you and shalom.